the first lesson is picking your co-founders um, you know, in an intelligent way and not just jumping uh, to start a business or start a company with people just because they are very competent or just because they went to the same uh, university or just went to the same, they have the credentials, you know, on their resume. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a lot more uh, than just uh, competency uh, that's required uh, for a group of co-founders to function well together. And, you know, with Turo, I wanted to avoid that mistake. You know, I wanted to make sure that I was working with people uh, that uh, really shared the same level of enthusiasm uh, and, uh, you know, authentically wanted to pursue the same mission that I wanted to pursue. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I thought I'd, I'd do a better job this time as a leader because I've learned a lot about, you know, what it takes to, to be a successful leader. And I, you know, obviously we all make new mistakes, but I was determined not to make the same mistakes. So 10 years later, I jumped back into starting a company and, uh, you know, I'm really happy that I did it because I, I could see a material improvement. <laughs> you know, I think that there's uh, definitely a huge uh, change this year that we've seen. Uh, I think the, you know, the concern about health and safety has had a dramatic impact on public transit and on uh, ride sharing. Uh, mm -hmm. We see uh, the traffic, you know, in uh, public transportation and ride sharing networks down, you know, 60, 70, 80 percent year over year. Uh, and I think people are just concerned about their own health. And when you're concerned about your own health, you're not going to you're going to try to avoid, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, close to other people. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in, in the same confined space. So uh, that has dramatically impacted uh you know, public transit has dramatically impacted uh, ride sharing. The opposite, we've seen people uh, buying more cars and also uh, renting, uh, you know, cars uh, with Turo. So we've we've seen, um, you know, initially the business was was hit really hard uh, in March. You know, we were uh, beginning of March, we were growing seventy five percent year over year. By March twenty first, we were declining seventy five percent year over year. So it was a quite a quite a shock to the system. But then, you know, fast forward, Q2 ended up being pretty strong. You know, we ended up being down only 25%. Um, and then Q3, we're up 20%. And, and Q4 looks like we're going to be up uh, a bit more than that. So uh, what we found was a lot of people started using Turo because they didn't want to use public transit and didn't want to use rideshare. And so they started getting cars from people in their neighborhood and started uh, keeping those cars for a longer period of time. And then, you know, with the absence of air travel and international travel in particular, people started taking more local trips with cars. Uh, and so the business uh, really uh, benefited from, you know, the transition into uh, many more road trips this summer uh, than ever before, at least in the US. Uh, so, so that's been driving the business. And then I would say longer term, you know, I think we uh, we are still with with regards to transportation. I think we're still on the cusp of um, you know significant technological changes that will be impacting transportation over the long term. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, electric electric uh, car technology uh, is one of them. You know, this is only going to accelerate. In fact, the pandemic seems to have slightly accelerated uh, you know the adoption of electric cars. Uh, but you know, whether it's global rules around uh, uh, pollution and around emissions. I think that's gonna continue to drive electric growth. I think mm -hmm. technology in cars, connected cars, um, you know, potentially self-driving cars, yeah. uh, that is going to happen you know, over time. It's gonna take a few years, but it was gonna happen. I think the pandemic may have slowed down some of these efforts a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, but they will be back. And I think uh, transportation is going to be in a completely different uh, landscape, I would say, in the next five years than it's been in the last five years. Great questions. I think both of these are very exciting developments, you know, electric uh, technology, electric car technology, as well as uh, self-driving or autonomous driving cars. Uh, I think there's just uh, uh, a couple of big factors that are remaining. One, uh, the technology is still expensive, you know, battery technology is still expensive. 
you know, when you're switching from a combustion engine car to an electric car, you know, there is a uh, premium that you have to accept. Uh, and uh, the reality is, uh, um, you know, it, 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 it's, the premium is shrinking, but it's still there. Uh, and so uh, for such an important decision as buying a car, you know, people are gonna look at costs. They're gonna look at investment. They're gonna be very value oriented. Uh, at least the vast majority of consumers, right? And so uh, un until battery technology is able to deliver, uh, you know, a, a lower cost, uh, I think we'll, we're gonna continue to struggle with adoption. Uh, mm -hmm. And then secondly, when it comes to electric technology, it's charging, you know, charging networks, uh, while they have grown tremendously over the last five years, you know, they, are, they still pale in comparison with, uh, you know, uh, with uh, gas station networks, right? And so mm -hmm. there's going to continue to be a slow evolution and transition into, uh, you know, electric car technology as battery costs are still high and then charging networks are still relatively underdeveloped. But as I see it in the next, you know, five years, you know, we're going to close the gap on both of those elements. And, and so you know, I could see how in five to 10 years from now, the majority of new cars being sold will be electric. Uh, so that's exciting. On self-driving cars, I think, uh, you know, it's, a, it's also a question of technology. Uh, you know, as you know, there's different levels of uh, autonomy uh, from L1 to L5. Um, you know, very excited to see the announcement by Waymo earlier this month uh, with, uh, uh, you know, a new robo taxi network uh, that is being tested out now without any drivers. Uh, so this is like a, you know, an incredible accomplishment by Waymo. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, you know, if, if you see the, the reality of that network, you know, it's very, very limited in terms of size, you know, and it, and it's, it, it can really only work in certain weather conditions on certain roads. Yeah. Uh, and, and so in order, I think for self-driving to be much more, of a mass market value proposition, you know, the technology again has to evolve further uh, in order for, you know, cars to be able to, uh, you know, deal with uh, uh, less urban areas, uh, more challenging weather conditions. Uh, and it's a bit of a question mark really whether we will be able to reach the L5 level of autonomy um, mm -hmm. and whether we'll be able to have superior driving than human driving. Uh, for in all conditions, I'm sure in certain conditions, definitely, <laughs> but not necessarily in all conditions. So that is a bit of a question mark, but I, the way I see it is at minimum, it's going to make cars safer. And mm -hmm. as you know, many people die every year because of car accidents. And so yeah. if we can leverage this technology to make uh, driving safer and the road safer, I think it's a huge win for humanity at large.